This is the Exxon Radio TV show with Rob McConnell on the Exxon Broadcast Network and our worldwide family of broadcast affiliates. If you have a question for Rob McConnell or his guest, or if you've had a paranormal experience, call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 0, or email xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On all social media sites, our one address is xzone radio tv. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the Exxon Radio Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. Hi, this is Rob McConnell, and I invite you to join me on Turquoise Radio for the X-Zone Radio Show, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. After 21 years of paranormal TV and radio, thousands of celebrity interviews, and millions of worldwide supporters, I am very excited to bring my show to Turquoise Radio, where together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal to the science of parapsychology and all topics in between. Check out the website at turquoiseradio.com for showtimes. The Exxon Radio Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, on Turquoise Radio. And I'll see you in the Exxon. Countdown for blast off. X minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, X minus one. Fire! From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand would be worlds. The National Broadcasting Company presents X minus one. Tonight, the science fiction classic, Knock, by Frederick Brown. Tonight we have a strange story to tell, a sweet, blood-curdling little story that is really only two sentences long. The last man on earth sat alone in a room. There was a knock at the door. Hmm? What's that? Morning, man. What? Who are you? You have regained consciousness. Who are you? I am Zan. I'm still asleep, I must be. You are not asleep. Maybe if I close my eyes, it'll go away. I will not go away, man. No. I guess I'm awake. Who... What are you? I am a Zan. What's that? A Zan is intelligent life. Look, I don't... What happened? Where are you from? From planet seven in the third galaxy in the fourth quadrant. Where? It is not necessary to repeat information which is correct in the original statement. Planet seven? But you mean I'm not on Earth? You are still on your planet. 
What are you doing here? The Zans have annexed your world. You mean you've conquered Earth? Yes, that is correct. We will now prepare your planet for habitation by the Zan. How about the people? What about the population of the world? You are the population of the world. Hmm? Now, wait a minute. I, I can't... I don't understand what's happened. The Zan have landed on your planet. We have removed the lower life forms to prepare for colonization by the Zan. When did all this happen? Two days ago. You have been unconscious until now. You really mean I'm the last man on Earth? That is correct. Identify yourself now. What? Kindly provide data as to your position in the elementary social order of your planet. Oh, I'm uh, Walter Phelan, Associate Professor of Anthropology at Nathan University. How do you speak English? We have deciphered your written and recorded records. It is not difficult to reconstruct your language. It is a primary type of auditory communication. Oh. Is there anything you want to complete your natural habitat? You mean I'm a prisoner? That is correct. What would you want further in your room? Do I have to stay here? Yes. The rest of my life? Forever. You better bring me my books. That uh, there will be done. That's rather considerate of you. You know, I've got to call you something. Do you mind if I call you George? It is immaterial. I will be back, Associate Professor of Anthropology. Oh, that's all right, George. Just uh, call me Walter. Very well, Walter. I will be back with your books. All right, George. I'll be seeing you around. You will not be around, Walter. You will be here. <laughs> George. Hello, Walter. Uh, wait a minute, you're not George. You're different somehow. It makes no difference. The sun are many, and they are one. Then I'll call you George, too. I'll call you all George. Uh, what can I do for you? Point one. You will please henceforth sit with your chair facing the other way. Aha, uh -huh. I thought so, George. That plain wall is different from the other side, isn't it? That is correct. It is transparent. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm in a zoo, right? That is correct. How many other animals do you have in the zoo, George? 216. <laughs> Not complete, George. Even a Bush League zoo could beat that. Did you just uh, pick at random? Yes. All species would have been too many. Male and female, each of 108 kinds. Male and female, huh? Of uh, all the animals? There is a female of your species among the collection. Mm, anyone I know? Uh, well, never mind. It doesn't matter anyway. Well, uh, what do you feed us all, eh? For carnivorous species, we make synthetics. The flora was not hurt by the vibrations which destroyed animal life. Oh, nice for the flora. Well, George, you started out with point one. I deduce there is a point two kicking around somewhere. What is it? Something we do not understand. Oh? Two of the other animals sleep and do not wake. They are cold. Don't worry, George. It happens in the best regulated zoos. What is wrong with them, Walter? Nothing much. They're just dead. Mm -hmm. That means stopped. But nothing stopped them. Each was alone. Well, maybe they just died of old age. Old age? I do not understand. You don't? How old are you, George? Your planet went around the sun about 7,000 times since I was born. 7,000 years? Yes, I am still young. Yeah, babe in arms. Look, George, you've got something to learn about this planet you've hijacked. Here on Earth, we've got somebody you don't know where you come from. An old man with a beard and an hourglass and a scythe. Your vibrations didn't kill him. What is he? Oh, old man death. Down here, our people and animals live until somebody, the Grim Reaper, stops them. He will stop more? He gets us all, George. With your lifespan, it won't seem like a minute and we'll all be gone. <laughs> Looks like you made a mistake, George. And I don't think there's much you can do about it. That is not correct. The Zan is a logical being. We will take action. Well, George, uh, where are you taking me? We will be there shortly. We will bring your books and your chair. You mean my lease is up? I, I do not understand. It's moving day? That is correct. We are here now. You will live here now, Walter. It is a larger room. 
Well, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Go inside. Oh, be careful with those books, George. Don't lose my... Oh, uh, excuse me. Who, who are you? What are you doing here? I guess George didn't explain. Uh, George uh, tries to be polite, but he hasn't quite caught on yet. I'm Walter Phelan. My name is Grace Evans, Mr. Phelan. What's all this about? Why did they bring me here? I think I know why, but uh, let's go back a bit. Do you know just what has happened otherwise? No, not exactly. Well, I've been talking to George. George? Well, that's what I call them, all of them. There's no way to tell them apart anyway. There aren't many of them here yet. They come from outside the solar system, sort of an advanced scouting party. I saw their spaceship. It's as big as a mountain. Yeah, they're moving in on us. They cleaned off the Earth with some kind of vibration. It destroys all sorts of animal life. I don't know whether they did it all at once or if they had to circle the Earth a few times, but they killed everybody. No. I was afraid that... The cheerful note is that you and I and uh, 200-odd other animals were picked up beforehand as specimens for the zoo. You do know this is a zoo, don't you? I suspected it. But I don't remember anything about being captured. I just woke up here. Well, my hunch is they used the vibrations just low enough to knock us all out. And then they cruised around picking up samples at random. When they were all set, they turned the juice on full blast. How terrible. Yeah, well, they solved a lot of problems for us. Housing shortage, wars, even the atomic bomb. I don't suppose the human race, you and I, have to worry about anything now. It's awful. Only they made a mistake. They underestimated us. I don't understand. <laughs> they thought we were immortal. That we were what? Immortal, like they are. Oh, they can be killed, but the Zans don't know what natural death is. They didn't know anyway until they lost two of us yesterday. You mean there are, are more than two of us? Oh, not more of our species, no. These were merely fellow animals, a rabbit and a canary. And by the Zans' way of figuring time, the rest of us are only good for a few minutes apiece. It's a joke on them. They figured they had permanent specimens here in the zoo. Well, didn't they even know we'd all die eventually? I don't think so. Uh, George, that is the, the second Zan I saw, told me he was 7,000 years old, and he's young by their standards. When they learned how quickly we die, they, they were practically shocked to the core, if they have cores. How can you talk that way about it? Academic detachment. I learned it at faculty teas. At any rate, they've decided to reorganize their zoo. Two by two. What, are they going to keep us locked up together in this one little room? Yeah, I'm afraid so. There's plenty of furniture, though, and George promised to bring me my chair. We've got to do something. Why? Well, I don't know. It just, just seems to me we owe it to the human race to do something. Oh, well, uh, perhaps you have a suggestion? There must be some way. They can be killed, you said. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I've been studying them. They look horribly different, but I think they have about the same metabolic and digestive system as we. I think that anything that would kill one of us would kill one of them. But you said 7,000 years. Yeah, I, I think I figured it out. Now, George cut his, uh, I suppose you'd call it his hand, when he brought in my books. It started to bleed, red blood. But I could see the cut closing as he stood there. By the time he left, it was healed. I don't understand. Well, you see, whatever factor there is in man that makes him grow old is missing in the Zan. Their regenerative powers must be unlimited. They just don't wear out. They go on and on until they're stopped. Suppose we killed one. There must be some way. Oh. What would be the use? They wouldn't even punish us. They'd just give us our food through a trap door and put up a sign saying, Beware of the man. Dangerous. I don't think they'll even have to bother in your case. <laughs> I don't see anything funny. I'm sorry. It just reminds me of Martha. Martha? My wife. She died two years ago. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, not at all. It was a pleasure. Uh, that'll be George with my books. Come in. Hello, George. Hello, Walter. Point one, I have brought your books. Mm -hmm. Point one, eh? Uh, what else is on your mind? Another creature sleeps and will not wake. Oh? A small feathered one called a duck. Well, it happens, George. I warned you. Old man death, the grim reaper. I told you about him. Walter, the Council of Zan has met. It has been decided logically that, A, no life form can withstand the full strength vibrations with which we cleared your planet. Therefore, the Grim Reaper you spoke of does not exist. Mm, pretty neat, George. What's B? B, the only intelligent life to escape the vibrations is you. Therefore, the logical conclusion is you are stopping these animals by some means unknown to us. George, you are off your trolley. You will tell me now how this is done. You've got me. Yes, we have. It is necessary to save the remaining specimens as long as possible. 
If we do not get the information, we may be forced to dispense with your species entirely. This means you, Walter, and the female. Now, uh, hold on, George. Don't go off half-cocked. Uh, let me take a look at these animals that won't wake up. I will take you there now. Go first, Walter. After you, my dear George. <laughs> Now, you should have got him in the winter, George. The fur's worth more than its ermine. This is the reptile cage. Mm hmm. Here are the ducks. That is the male. The female has been stopped. Yeah, lucky girl. What's the matter, fellow? Lonely? Hmm? Walter, you will tell me how you stopped the female duck. Well, you got me, George. I didn't do it. Maybe she died of the Dutch elm blight. Walter, you are not being logical. We have concluded you are stopping these animals. Tell us now how it is done. I've told you, George, I haven't the foggiest notion. Very well, we will have to take further action. Oh, what are you going to do, George? We will go back now to your room. What happened, Mr. Phelan? Uh, you might call me Walter. After all, George does. And we have more in common. Please, what happened? Oh, just a duck, a dead duck. George thinks I killed her by remote control. He wants me to tell him how. Did you? Look, I'm just an ordinary anthropologist. There's no telling what those animals died of. Just natural causes. But George can't see it that way. He thinks I'm holding out on him. Good. Hmm, what? At least we can get back at them some way. At least we can do something to them. Well, why? After all, George isn't a bad fellow. If you like an ant mentality. How can you say that? They murdered the whole in the human race. I suppose so, but uh, we can't change that now, so why think about it? We just can't sit here and do nothing. I fail to see how we can do anything else. But at least we could be fighting. I can't see the virtue in that. I was more or less content with my books, and we've got George to talk to. Of all the men in the world they had to pick, don't you want to fight back? Don't you want to keep on fighting to the end? It hadn't occurred to me. But we've got to, Walter. Why? I can't really explain it, but... Walter, if there was any good in man, it was that he kept on struggling against nature and, in the end, even against himself. But he kept on fighting for what he thought was right, and we're all that's left. Walter, we, we just can't end by giving up. We've got to keep on fighting. You know, you do remind me of Martha. There isn't much left for us. We could beat them in this one small thing. We can pretend there's a secret about death. We could refuse to tell them anything. Well, there isn't anything to tell. But they don't know that. Promise me you won't give in. Well, I suppose the worst they can do is kill us. All right, Miss Evans. Hello, George. Hello, Walter. Now you will tell us how these animals are stopped. George, this may come as a shock to you, but I've decided not to tell you. Why? Oh, a romantic attachment to lost causes. My grandfather was a Confederate officer. Walter, you are not being logical. Neither was my grandfather. He charged a Yankee battery with one round of ammunition and a corncob pipe. You are not logical, but that is expected in lower life forms. You will come with me now, Walter. Where are you taking him? To the second level. Go now, Walter. You won't tell them. I can't guarantee anything, but as of now, I don't intend to. We've got to fight, Walter. Remember that. We've got to go out fighting. Yes. Yes, I think you're right. Go now, Walter. Goodbye. It's uh, been a pleasure, Miss Evans. I am waiting. Go now, Walter. After you, my dear George. You will tell us now, Walter. <laughs> that was the first level of vibration. There are many more. However, we have calculated that none of them exceed your threshold of unconsciousness. Oh, very clever, George. Of course. You will tell us now, how do you stop these animals? You will tell us now? As of now, no. However, I'm not very brave if that encourages you, George. You are not being logical, Walter. You're telling me. We will now use vibration level two. <laughs> You are still conscious. Let me alone, George. You will tell us now. You will tell us now how you stop the animals. Let me alone. Let me alone. We have had vibration levels one and two. There are still 15 more before your threshold of unconsciousness. Oh, no, no. Let me alone. Walter, listen to me. 
Another creature sleeps and will not wake. We must know now. It's tough. You better start vibrating again, George. No. What? It would not be logical. We have calculated that no further level of vibration will overcome your irrational psychological block. We conclude you will not tell. And let me go? That is correct. Oh, that's uh, real nice of you, George. I appreciate it. We have calculated that the resistance of the female of your species will be lower. We will now place her under the vibrations. No, no, no George, George, you can't do that. No, listen, George. George, there is no secret. Can you understand that? There is no secret. Those animals died from natural causes. I'm telling you the truth. That is not a logical answer. We will get the woman. I've told you the truth. Can't you understand? We must know now. The female animal cage next to the duck has been stopped. We must preserve the survivor. Uh, the animal... Animal next to the duck? We will bring the woman here. She will tell us after the vibration. No, no, no. no, no. Listen, George. You want the truth? You want to know how to save the mates of the animals that have been stopped? You will tell us now? Yes, yes, I'll tell you now. I, I give up. But you've got to promise to leave the woman alone. You promise, George? If we receive the answer from you, Walter, there will be no further need for the vibrations. Well, I guess that'll have to do. All right. All right. Take me to that stopped animal. I'll tell you how to save the mate. Very well, Walter. You are being logical now. We will go. Walter, are you all right? Just, uh, just let me catch my breath a minute. What did they do? What happened? After a while, I told them what they wanted to know. Oh, no. As uh, George pointed out, it seemed to be the logical thing at the time. But you promised. I know. It was our last chance to beat them on even one little thing. Well, perhaps. You mind if I sit down? You gave up. Well, I suppose you could call it that. I'm very tired. They've beaten us completely then. There isn't even anything we can do. The last of the human race and we give up. We don't even die fighting. Oh, it isn't that bad. Uh, something might turn up. Uh, what did you call me? Uh, uh, huh? No, I, I must have said Martha. Sorry, she was my wife. She died two years ago. What were you saying? Nothing, nothing. It doesn't matter. It's too late. It's too late for the whole human race. What now, George? The council of the Zan has met. Oh, something wrong, George? A Zan has been stopped. What? A Zan is dead? That is correct. Well, you didn't believe me, George. But you can die. You can really die. You'll have to get used to that if you're going to stay here. The council has decided. A, you have in some way stopped this Zan. B, you and the woman must be eliminated. Walter. No, no, you've got it wrong, George. The council has decided. This time you will have the full vibration. This time? Walter, what did they do to you? Oh, they, uh, they have a rather effective third degree. They tortured you, Walter? Yes. And I... I thought... Oh, Walter, it was all my fault. I wouldn't even have tried without you. I suppose we have a last chance now to, to end with some dignity. I think you're a very brave man, Walter. No, not very. There isn't much else to do. Do we go now, George? No, Walter. Wait. Hmm? What's that? I have been told another Zan has died. Uh, now, now will you believe me? Council of the Zan meets now. Two gone already, and you were with me, George. You know I didn't kill this one. What stopped him then? I told you, it's old man death. You came to the wrong planet, George. Your immortality doesn't go down here. He can stop you, but you can't stop him. And you'll all die if you stick around. What now? The council has decided. This is a place of death. We will leave your planet. Leave? You mean you're giving up? It is not safe for the Zan. Oh, Walter, they're leaving. They're really going. Go on then, George. And uh, don't hurry back. It would not be logical to do so. We are leaving the Earth now. Goodbye, Walter. Goodbye, George. So wonderful to feel the sun and the wind again. Yeah, they've closed the hatches. Walter, is it safe for us to be out here? Yes, they're not interested in us any longer. They only want to get away. And I want to see this, Grace. 
the Zan, leaving Earth forever. They're blasting off. There they go. Yes, it's all over now. Well, I suppose we might as well go back in. I, I still don't understand. Walter, what made them go? <laughs> well, I just, uh, I just told them the facts of life. Of death, you mean? No, no, of life. After all, I thought George was old enough to know. At 7,000 years, he was going to be a pretty big boy. I wish you'd stop joking and tell me what happened. <laughs> Look out for the step. Well, uh... You remember when the first animals died? The rabbit and the duck? Yeah, and their mates just started to pine and waste away? Yes. Well, that worried the Zan. They wanted to keep the last specimens alive if they could. So finally, I broke down and told them about affection. Affection? Yes. And then I introduced Donald. Donald? Who's that? Here we are. Grace, meet Donald. Oh, Walter, please. What does affection have to do with it? That's what the Zan wanted to know. I told him it was love that made the world go round. But having lost his mate, Donald would die immediately unless he had affection and constant petting. Petting? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I even showed him how. Here, fella, come on. Come here. Yeah. I held Donald in my arms, and I petted him a while. Then I let the Zan take over with the animal in the next cage. What animal? Take a look. You mean this cage? Mm -hmm. Watch out. Don't go too close. Walter, it's a rattlesnake. Yeah, yes. Their metabolism made it impossible for them to die of old age, but I had a hunch that they could be poisoned. Well, then it was the snake that killed the two Zan. Mm-hmm. They never even knew what bit them. Then you outwitted them, Walter. Well, I, I suppose... I you... thought you'd just given up. Oh, Walter, I'm so ashamed. You don't have to be. I had given up. I probably wouldn't have fought if you hadn't pushed me. Well, I... Well, we've got a world to plan. A new world, Grace. I know. We'll have to decide which animals to let out of the zoo and which ones it'd be safer to keep in. But first, there's a bigger problem. What's that? The human race. Oh. We've got to make a decision about that. Pretty important one. Y yes, but... It's been a nice race, even if nobody won it. Of course, it may go backward for a while until it gets its breath, but we can save the books and all the most important things and get it started ahead once more. No. It's the Garden of Eden all over again. Uh, but Eve, you'll have to watch out for that snake. Now, don't. Don't be ridiculous, Walter. You know, funny, you, you even blush like Martha. Only uh, you're stronger than she was. Prettier, too. I, I, I wish you'd forget about Martha. I think I will, my dear. If you'll give me time. Now, Walter Phelan, you listen to me. If you think for one minute that I... Well, that I we thought could... it would never happen to me again. But it is love that makes the world go round. So, Grace, if you could only... No. I wouldn't marry you if, if you were the last man on earth. But that's exactly what I am. I don't care. I don't even want to talk about it. I'm going out. All right, my dear, but think it over. And please come back. <laughs> You see, I told you, it wasn't really so horrible, our story. Remember how it goes? The last man on earth sat alone in a room. And then there was a knock on the door. Come in. Come in, Grace. My dear. You see, it wasn't horrible at all. In just a moment, a word about next week's adventure. Tonight, by transcription... X-1 has brought you Knock by Frederick Brown, adapted for radio by Ernest Kinoy. Featured in the cast were Alex Scorby as Walter, Laurie March as Grace, and Louis Van Ruten as the Zan. X-1 was directed by Fred Way and is an NBC Radio Network production.
And now, next week. A strange and chilling story from the Bureau of Missing Persons. The story of what occurred when they accidentally intercepted a shortwave message. A cry for help from a missing atomic scientist who told them the fantastic story that he was now the man in the moon. How did it happen? You'll hear next week at X minus one. Join the Abbots on another baffling mystery tonight over most NBC radio stations.